Anecdotes for success. Level up with truth, meaning, trade-offs, perspective. Well, we've been sitting here talking to Matt Gill, a.k.a. Gilly. And the reason I'm saying that is, is I've known Gilly forever, and we already have one Matt on the podcast. So for the length of this podcast, we're going to call Matt Gill Gilly. Are you okay with that, Gilly? All good by me. All right. So we have Gilly, uh, ex-student of mine, class of 2017? Yes, 17. Yes. Uh, same as Matt's daughter, actually. Right. You guys must have been in opposite classes, AM and PM. Yes, I was in the PM. She was in the AM. Yeah, and so obviously Matt's been a, a mentor of Gilly, and and the whole purpose of this podcast is to talk about our four pillars and 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 how just being around motivated, like-minded young people, you you can do the same thing as well. So. Gilly, start us off. What have you been up to since high school? We know, but talk, talk to I, us. Actually, actually, I don't. I haven't seen <laughs> Matt in, in, what, four-plus years now, I guess it is. So um, mm. it was it was a blast from the past for me, and, and absolutely great to see you, and thanks for spending some time with us. But by all means, you know, I, we were we were made sure that we didn't get into it too much. So, you know, I know I know a little bit, but go ahead. Tell us, tell us what's been going on with you. So uh, first off, guys, thank you for having me. Uh, I do have to say, since I found out you guys were doing this, I've been dreaming of the day that I could get on the podcast. So <laughs> don't we'll blow start, it. We'll start there. <laughs> but uh, no, so to start off, uh, hello, everybody. My name is Matt Gill. Uh, I'm currently the goaltender, lo the lacrosse goalie coach at Long Island University. Um, to Go back to what Paul said starting off. Uh, I, I graduated high school in 2017. Uh, went to play college across at St. Rose for two years. Had a blast. Um, got into a little, and this is something that I'll expand on a little bit more. Uh, so I, got, I battled some mental health issues at, after my sophomore year of college. And things for me kind of took a downturn. I stopped playing lacrosse, gained a bunch of weight. At one point, I was actually 300 pounds. So I kind of hit my rock bottom at sophomore year and didn't really know what was going on with life and had to take a second, ended up transferring out of St. Rose, went to the University of Buffalo for a year or for a semester, pardon me. Uh, went there, things kind of got a little bit worse and ended up transferring to Oswego with a few people that I know, some good friends of mine, uh, Tyler Rogan, who was also who also was in New Visions and a former student of Paul's. And uh, another one of my good home, hometown friends, Ben Adams, and uh, went went there for my spring semester, and then COVID hit, so I ended up leaving, and I was still battling some mental health issues and all that. Um, and at this time, I actually picked up the ha the hobby of running, which, for those of you who don't know, I was a lacrosse goalie. And lacrosse goalies do not run. And that is exactly why in youth league, I decided to be a lacrosse goalie was because I hated, <laughs> I hated running to the highest degree. And that was the one position on the field that you didn't have to run. So I was like, you know what, throw me in the goal. I have no problem standing in there and having people throw rubber pellets at me all day, as long as I don't have to run. <laughs> so uh, that's a trade off um, for sure. It is. That's a, that's a big trade off. So I picked up the hobby of running and kind of started myself on this fitness journey. Um, signed up to do the wine glass half marathon in October, which unfortunately due to COVID got canceled. So this was, that was October of 2020. And then I ended up going. So I went through the rest of the semester online and everything went through the entire summer was getting better with my mental health issues and all that. And then, uh, when it came time to go back to school in the fall, I was still kind of, I was still in a rut and I knew I needed to really learn how to live with myself and not with other people telling me how I should live with myself and kind of get away from all the outside voices and put myself in a situation where it was just me, myself and I, and I had to figure some things out. So God bless my aunt, uh, Julie Sokolowski, who let me come down and live with her in Virginia Beach for the semester and 
I went down there for three months and really kind of sorted some things out, kept running and all that, lost. I ended up losing 40 pounds down there. I'm down 80 pounds in total. Um, thank you. And uh, it's just been ever since then. I, I got back to Oswego. I started coaching there. I went up to – I approached the head lacrosse coach there and just was like, look, I used to be a college goaltender. Um, one of my brothers, uh, Lucas Laws, is committed to play hop is to committed to play lacrosse at Johns Hopkins when he goes to college. And uh, I had worked with him, and this is all kind of going to spiral into a few things. So I'm going to have to backtrack again. But because of Lucas, so Lucas started working with these goalie trainers down in Baltimore, Maryland, called Goalie Smith Lacrosse. And it's run by two guys, Mike and Andrew Gavazdin. Um, at the time, it was run by two guys. They've added some staff sent and some pretty high-level names in the lacrosse community. But over that summer, the last summer in 2020, uh, I was fortunate enough where my parents allowed me to take Lucas down to Baltimore whenever he went to go down there to work with those guys. And those guys train a lot, pretty much all the high-level goaltenders in the lacrosse world, whether it be college or high-level high, high school recruits and all that. So the businessman and me just kind of got to know those guys, a little networking. And as I, I got the job in – I got the job for Oswego that spring and those guys, like they were, uh, they allowed me to use their name on their, uh, as a reference and all that. So I use using their name and just my knowledge and all that. They also needed a goalie coach. I was able to obtain the goalie job at Oswego and worked for them for the season and ended up really falling in love with coaching. And even though we ended up going 0 and 7, but I really fell in love with the process and everything that kind of came along with it. Um, so graduated from college last spring with a degree in marketing, graduated on the dean's list. So GPA of above a three, five, my mom was happy about it. <laughs> um, and really this last summer, I spent a lot of time with the goalie Smith guys down in Baltimore, Maryland. And I can't thank Mike and Andrew Gavazdin enough because without really even me knowing it and not knowing really what was coming next in my walk of life. Cause for a while I thought I was going to go down to Tampa, Florida and either sell solar panels or try to do something down there. And those guys without really even telling me kind of just mentioned my name to a few division one coaches about for the head potential goalie openings and all that. And next thing I know, I get a text message from them saying, yeah, by the way, we mentioned your name as a goalie coach to, blank, blank, and blank schools. And one of the schools happened to be Long Island University. And uh, I had a phone call with the defensive coordinator, newly hired defensive coordinator, Logan Greco. And that led to a, me getting a few more interviews with them and the head coach and meeting the starting goalie. And he liked where my head was at and everything. So I ended up getting the job for them as the volunteer assistant. And I'm the goalie coach for the team. So that's kind of where I've been the last four years. It's been a rocky roller coaster, a lot of ups, a lot of downs, but it all evens itself out in the end. So that's a span of four years. Like, how exciting are your next four years going to be? Holy cow. I, I don't know. There's there's a lot of, uh, as I said, there's it's been a lot of ups and downs, and it's been a lot of high ups and a lot of low downs. So... I mean, I'm just, I'm very grateful to be in the position that I am because, I mean, going through battling the mental health issues and everything, like a lot of people, there are a lot of people, unfortunately, who don't make it out of that situation and not to kind of take this into like a deep, sad state, but it's just the fact of the matter, like that's, it's a growing issue in our society. And I'm glad that more and more people are bringing awareness to it and talking about it. Yeah. You know, yeah. Matt, I think it's worth treading into that a little bit. If, if you're comfortable, if you're not, that's fine, too. Yeah, um, sure. Know, uh, because not not to belabor it on your end, but because it's obviously a common thing. I mean, every, everyone listening, we all know people have had, had mental health issues, no question about it. You've experienced it directly. It certainly sounds like to a pretty um, difficult degree, for lack of a better way of saying it. 
but it's it's common and like you said it's so good to hear when people talk about things because it takes that stigma or you hope to take that stigma away right i mean paul when you and i were growing up though that term would have brought some sort of shame to it probably right oh you're yeah. you're this or that or whatever and and hopefully we're bypass or beyond that a little bit where we can talk openly about it and say it's common. It happens. There's reasons for it. It can be can be dealt with. We hope, you know. And so, so for you, and you were talking about that along with the running and the exercise and some of that. Was that one of the ways you helped get through it? Your exercise, or I, I couldn't help but figure maybe that was related. What 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 was that like? Yeah. So that was that was. I, I it was two components for me. Then the exercise was definitely one of one of those two. Um. After I stopped playing lacrosse, I fell into the trap that a lot of athletes, after they stop playing sports are, it's like they finish, they get done playing and they're like, I don't want to work out for a month. Like, I just want to take a month to myself. And that was exactly what I did. And then it from one month went to two months, and three months and all that. And obviously it spiraled really out of control as I gained a ton of weight. So it was... Uh, now, the exercise definitely was getting back. It, it, it kind of helped me get back into a routine and getting things going and stuff like that. And I'll get down into the morning routine here as we go on. But the second thing that the biggest part, the biggest part to me was really focusing on my mindset. And speaking about that, it's I used to be somebody who really tried to focus on every possible aspect of an outcome and figuring out why things happen and factoring in every possible factor and things would happen and I wouldn't understand why, but, and I kept putting all the blame on myself and I'm like, well, why didn't this happen? I would do all the things that I could do. And it really kind of just got, got down to me when I started focusing on all the things that I could control and like those things to me. And this is one of the things that I, because I have the blessing to be able to coach these young men and they're looking to take the next step that I've just taken is I always preach you can you can control your attitude you can control your effort and you can control your urgency those are the three things for me that I focus on my attitude my effort my urgency like I need to make sure that when we're in practice or something like if we're in the moment I'm there I'm listening I'm attentive I all the little things that I can focus on and that I can control those are the things that I focus on because what somebody else is doing, that's not something that I can control. I can try, I can try to influence their fat with certain ways, like what they do and things like that. But I just got to the point where I was like, you know what, I'm going to focus on myself and all the things that I can control and try and build my best self that way. And that was one of the ways that really helped me start to take strides and really progress through all that. So you were able to tackle a lot of this this this, this um, mental health issue kind of on your own in, in in some sense. Is that fair to say? Yes. Um. It, I guess the mental health thing for me it didn't. It started way before my uh, me getting to college. So mm, okay. My parent like my parents split when I was younger, and that God bless them for it because it was the right thing for them. Because I look at both of them now, and they're much happier than when they were together and it was what needed to happen so I I saw a counselor and like went to talk to somebody professionally um in seventh and eighth grade so like I had stuff that dated back through that and like I would have my moments here and there in high school but definitely like my sophomore year of college and that summer going into my junior year that was by far my worst so obviously and then you like you're saying you had a, you've had a lot of ups and downs and 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 your your um seem to have seem to have a so wh where does it where does a guy I guess what I'm asking is where's a guy in your position right now what's what's next where's the where are you headed so uh, for me it's coaching yeah I, I I think so I never had a goalie coach growing up in lacrosse and a lot of the drills and aspects and stuff like that and I one one of the assistant coaches he has this little plaque in his house because when I first moved down here I had to live with him for a few days before my apartment opened up and he has this he has this plaque in his house and it says good coaches change the outcome of a game 
great coaches change the lives of the people that they coach. And I, I love the fact of being able that every day I can come to the facilities and work with these kids kids. and inspire them to do the right thing while also preaching what helped me in terms of controlling what they can control and me also being a former college student as of recent. So I know a lot of what they're going through and I can relate to a lot of the problems that they have. For me, it's just, I love being able to help those people and I love to help others. So coaching to me, I feel like that's the way that I can make my impact. And that's where I really find my meaning in life is helping others. And I think by me doing that through coaching, that's, that's really what's in the future for me. Gotcha. I think that's awesome, Matt. I mean, it's, it's the same reason I coach so many sports in high school. Uh, that, that court, that field, uh, course, whatever. It's, it's such an escape for people. And that, that's what I want to talk to you about. Go back to, to high school, right? Matt, Matt mentioned earlier, the stigma, how when we were young, if somebody mentioned mental health, we, we'd be like, you know, they'd call you this or that. But Matt, when you think back when we were young, I think it was what, 200 years ago? At least. Uh, we didn't play you sports like these kids play you sports today. No, I mean, it's a we, different level. I played backyard football. I, I mean, I, I did all stars and you just play all your sports and you, you, your dad might coach your, your rec league team or whatever. And, and that, or, or your parents might not even be there because they were too busy working and everybody just did their thing afterwards. But, but Matt, that's not the world you grew up in. No, it's not no. the world my daughters grew up in and there's so many pros to it, but there's, when you leave high school, you have a plan that's set that you've worked on forever. Mm -hmm. And and do you think that like when your plan kind of goes off the rails, now you can look back with perspective and say, it's all part of my journey. And that's, what's going to make me a great coach changing the lives of other people. Mm -hmm. But do you think that's, that was really hard when, when the plan gets derailed? Yes, for sure. Uh, You, for me, especially like I, not to toot my own horn, but I was a high school All-American goaltender, and I was kind of like, I, I was a three-time starter on varsity, two-time captain, and all that, and all that I really kind of ever heard, like, in horse heads was, yeah, like, you're awesome, you're a great goalie, there's no way you can't succeed at the next level, and then you leave the situation that you're in, and you put yourself in a completely new situation, and things aren't the same, like, you have to start from ground zero, and work your way up again. And I, that, that to me was a shell shock because it's just the, like small town horse that you don't really get to experience a lot of the things that a lot of these other kids do growing up in bigger cities. Like there are some positions and I'm, I'm not saying mine was one of them because one of my best friends, Ben Adams was one hell of a goaltender and he pushed me as hard as I could ever be worked to be as good as I was. Cause I didn't want to lose my spot. But there were a ton of people in that on, on the lacrosse team and in other sports where because we don't have the number of kids trying out that other school districts do, it's like they just know walking in day one that, oh, I'm going to start and there's really nobody that's going to take my spot. So you leave and it's like, oh, you go from being the man to now you're a nobody and you have to start from ground zero. And that was that was one of the things that, was definitely a change for me and it was it took me a while to kind of flip my mindset as I was that was one of the things where I was like well I don't understand how I could just be go from being the man to now being nobody like nobody really knows who I am and it really threw me for a loop but it just made me think that okay if I have to start from ground zero that's where it took me a while to get to the point of being the only way to do it is to control what you can control and starting with those three things that I talked about your urgency your effort and your attitude and start going from there. And that's really kind of how I've just put myself and me being in a new situation right now. Those are the three things that I focus on and it's put me in a very good spot in these first three weeks of me being here. So Matt, that's the whole point. Like you've successfully, I see it. I've been around a ton of high school and college athletes and, and, and I love being around them, 
But what's concerning to me is how many identify themselves solely with the sport they play. Yeah, and there's yeah. going to be life after that sport. And what they don't realize is the lessons they're learning is going to create a life that they might not even imagine if they handle it the right way. But but when they leave that sport and you have that blank canvas, I, I think that's where the issue is like, no, I'm this, I'm that. And two things, when you get out of high school, your identity shifts because everybody's your identity. And yeah, then when yeah. you leave the sport, wh whatever it is, whether it's high school, two years in, after college, a, a pro career, whatever anybody does, I think people really struggle with who am I now? Because growing up, nobody talks about that side of your life. It's all sports related. Yeah. Yeah. But you've seemed to overcome that, which is awesome. And you're going to help tons of people because of that. I appreciate it. Thank you. Was there a one moment in time, like when you finished playing where all of a sudden you said, this isn't who I am. This isn't who I want to be. I need to be the gilly that mr richmond knows you know yeah um i would have to say it, it was this summer like after i graduated i after i graduated college and i had already i had the plans to go down to tampa florida like i had i'm currently right now paying double rent because i have an apartment down there like i was full set full fledged ready to go and um, it was this summer, like I, I was, I kept thinking like, yeah, yeah, I'm going down to Tampa. And I kept telling myself I'm going down to Tampa. And there was just a part of me inside of me that was like, dude, what, what are you doing? This is not what's meant for you. And I'm a firm believer and things work, things will end up working the way out, working themselves out the way that they should. And I just, by me doing the coaching and stuff, because I had to, over the summer, I had to raise a ton of money because I was going to go down there and I was going to end up taking a no commi uh, commission only sales job. So no starting salary or anything. So the entire summer leading down there, I had to work. I went, I worked three jobs this summer, technically. I did, I worked for Diamond and Bay Corps and the moving company. I worked for Jake West, one of Paul's former students. And Matt, you may know him as well. I do. I yep. I know Jake. So I worked, I worked for Jake, uh, landscape, helping him this summer with his landscaping business. I was the weed whacker. He was the guy that mowed lawns <laughs> and you were the I, muscle, huh? Yeah. I, I, if that's what you want to call it, go ahead. <laughs> well, I've seen Jake, so, you know, but go ahead. <laughs> so, and then I worked with, I, God bless the goalie Smith guys. They let me come down and coach with them as much as I can make it down there this summer. And they, pay they paid me a pretty hefty penny to be to be able to come down there and work there's work the, the events with them and it's I, I guess like I guess to answer your question it was one of those things where I just kept doing what I loved alongside with doing what needed be needed to be done in order to make ends meet and things just kind of worked themselves out well Matt Matt you just said something really really interesting and then and then then kind of you didn't contradict yourself at all, but in a way it could be interpreted that way. I just want to point it out because it's, it's important. You said you believe things are going to happen. Things happen for a reason. And I don't disagree. I'm not disagreeing with that. Mm -hmm. And then you follow it up with, I worked three jobs. I did this. I work like I'm with you. I think things happen that are supposed to happen, but you didn't sit on your couch and play call of duty for three months and go, things are supposed to happen that happen. And, that job's going to call any day now. Just let me, you know, play another couple more hours of video games. You got off your butt and you, and you, and you took control. And it's just vital that, that we point that out because I'm with you. I think things happen, but they happen to people who make things happen. And you just yes. talked about three entirely different types of jobs and, and none of which, at least the, the Working with Jake, I know can't be glamorous, and a moving company certainly, you know, it's hard work and not glamorous. You weren't asking for anybody to take care of you. You weren't looking for a handout. You were saying, "I got, I got to figure things out, right? I got a job. I got a, I, I, I got an opportunity down in Tampa. It's going to require me having some money in the bank before I got here." You pursue your passion and in, in the lacrosse end of things, and lo and behold, things work out. And that's more the story that I think is realistic than people who will say, well, things just happen. 
And then they go, woe is me, nothing happened for me. And you go, well, what have you done? And the answer is generally well, almost nothing. Whereas you took the exact opposite track, which I, I can't, I, I have so much respect for and said, I got to get to work and, and I'm going to figure it out. And whether we're talking about this example, whether we're talking about the mental health situation you brought up earlier, whether we're talking about uh, your, your weight loss, it sounds to me like everything that you've had some difficulty with that you've overcome happened because you decided to make some changes and take some action. And, yeah. and that's not to lessen the impact that some people have, especially in the mental health issue, which I know, thank God I've never had that issue. And, and I know it can be just devastating. I don't pretend to be an expert, but I mean, just in general, action is where it's at, right? And, and what you were talking about, the three things you talk about that you preach that you can control, you know, one of those is, well, really the whole overall theme is, I got to take control of the things I can control and everything else I got to let go. And I was fortunate enough. I grew up in a family where my dad taught me that from a young, young age, control what you can control, everything else, let go. And, and, and I was like, I was lucky. That was one of the things I've always felt lucky is the, lucky in is I had a father and a parents who taught me that not everyone came up that way, but you're taking control. You've taken control. And just more importantly, you're leading young people and and providing that same message. And and uh, and we need more people with that message out there saying, take action, take control, control what you can. Doesn't mean things aren't, aren't going to happen that you don't like. Doesn't mean bad things aren't going to happen. Doesn't mean you're not going to have down times, right, or, or difficulties or anything. Of course you are. It's called life. But mm -hmm. if you do what you're talking about, um, your, your results will be better, quicker, and more controllable. And, uh, your story, I think is, is a, a testament to that. So it was a long way for me to point that out, but I had to point it out. No, I, I appreciate it. Thank you. And to kind of layer off what you said with taking the action is, and I'm a person where I get extremely overwhelmed if I start looking at things in the big picture like I'll start focusing on things that are months down the road like oh how am I going to piece this together and the most important thing is to just start pick one thing like for me it was when I started the running and things and that's when that's when life really started to turn around for me it was when I got up off my butt and I started to do something I'll and never just, forget I'm sorry to interrupt but it was just running to start yeah, it was, it was, right? running, I, mean, it was yeah, yeah, keep going. I just, okay. Yeah. So I'll, I will never forget this. And from somebody uh, who was an athlete, works with athletes, all that, the first mile I ran when I was 300 pounds, when I went out and I was like, you know what, I'm going to start today. I'm going to run one mile. I ran at a 12 minute per mile pace. And that was me huffing, puffing, <laughs> chugging along, trying as hard as I could. 12-minute mile. And I just remember getting done, and I'm like, I'm flying. I, I thought I, well, I thought I was flying. And I looked out at my phone, and I'm like, God, I feel like I feel like it wasn't that bad. And I looked down, I'm like, maybe it's like the 9, 30 to 10-minute range. And I saw 12, and I went, 12. We got work to really? do. Yeah, we got work to do. But that's, when, did yeah, but run, when did you run next? I, the next day I got up the next, I got up the next day and the next day was a stretch. Cause I was sore. I mean, uh, yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> it was, it was a long stretch. And then I went out and I ran another 12 minute mile. Okay. And it just started from there. And next thing I know it was 1155 and it just obviously like over time, I mean, it didn't, and it, it wasn't something where it was like, Oh, 12 minute mile the first month, 10 minute mile the second month. Eight minute mile month three, we're flying around. No, I was running like I was running a ten minute mile three months into running. Mm -hmm. But and, you were running, yes. But I was running, and that's all that I cared about. And I, I, I got to the point where I was like, you know what? All right, here's where I'm at, and I know I have to do better than this. So I would go out, and I'm like, I'm not out here. I'm not trying to run and win the Boston Marathon. And this is where kind of putting things into perspective is too. 
Like I'm at the time when I'm running a 10 minute mile, I'm 270 pounds. I'm not running a pace. That's going to win me the Boston marathon. I need to go out and just get a run in. Yep. So I wouldn't look at the time and it was more about just getting those miles in and making sure that I do it. No matter if I get like, you know what, today's run called for three miles and I got to two and a half miles and I'm sucking wind. I got a cramp, whatever. Okay. I walk the last half mile. But, but I'm getting three in. Done. Yes. I'm getting three in. It's getting done. And that is, it's, it's, it's such a great example. It's just so important. And whether you're talking about Running, you know, losing weight, uh, business, which which Paul and I talk about all the time, of course. It whatever it is, it's it's just I'm always saying the same thing to people. Just start, just run that first mile. I don't care how long it takes. I don't care. I, I, there, we don't have to measure anything other than take the action and do it. And if you do that, and you keep doing it, before you know it. You're not 270, you're 220, you're not running 12-minute miles, you're running eight or whatever, or you you, you don't have that, uh, um, that the, the business, you're not making any money, or you're just breaking even, and before you know it, you're making a couple bucks, and then you're making, in, or, you, or you only have 10 followers, and then, next, you know, next, or customers, and next thing you know, you have 100, and then you have 1,000, and it's all... Nothing ever happens like that, right? Yes. Nothing does. It doesn't work like that. And we we live in a, you know, it's so, we see everything and we see the result. All we see is a result, you know, whether it's a great athlete, whether it's a great business person, what we don't see is a person dragging themselves out for that first mile or that one or two miles or three miles for the first week, this first month, the first year. And that's the lesson. That's the important part. That's the victory. That's the win. It's not when you're holding the trophy. It's not when you have the million dollars. It's not when you have the fancy car, the big yacht, or whatever the heck you like. It's dragging yourself off the couch every single day, not because someone else is watching you, because you're watching you. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's just fantastic. Thank Ma you. Matt, we see this all – or, Gilly, we see this all the time. So uh... – your story's awesome and we love the themes attached to it. So you're telling me when things didn't go your way, okay, you felt sorry for yourself a little while. Then you did something about it. You took action. You stayed consistent. You had discipline, right? Uh, and things happened for a reason because you worked your ass off. And you know what's going to happen? We already know the next stage, Matt. A after, after, he's, after things start compounding real well, what are people going to start telling him he is? What's the word they use all the time? Oh, yeah, they're going to tell you how lucky you are and how oh, fortunate you are. And you're going to make that – you're going to roll your head back and you're going to be like, if you only knew what I know, right? If, you've, if you were only there during the down times and, and this and that, and it'll, it'll, it'll hurt. In some sense, it'll feel like a compliment. In another, it's it, it'll be hard to manage, but it it'll it's what well if you keep doing it, and you know this, you're already doing it. You're you and you're gonna have look. You're gonna have failures, right? You're gonna have things that are gonna happen in your life, just like Paul does, just like I do, just like everyone does. It's life. But, just, but you already you know the formula. You know the formula. It's already there. You've already figured it out. And and. Uh, that's what, you know, the, the, you know, people ask me, why, Paul, Paul, why you and I do this? You know, why we do this? This is why we do this, to talk about this stuff. Because I hope that someone's listening who's sitting on their couch, Matt, who weighs 300 pounds, who's, who's been struggling at life. Well, I don't care if they're an athlete or, or not an athlete, or they've never picked up a, a lacrosse stick or a basketball or, or a tennis racket in their entire life. I don't care. What I care about is I hear what you have to say because your story isn't a, an athletic story. It's a life story, right? It's about do, taking control, controlling what you can control, and going day in and day out, day in and day out. And what's unique about you or, or what's cool is you're in a position now, too, to influence lives, and, and I – I'm willing to bet that you can't, whether you have not, have now or not, but you're going to run into a lot of people have had similar challenges that you would have. Are you finding that yet? Is that, I mean, 
what what do you what do you love about the the job that you're in right now? I mean, I know I know what you talked about a little bit about influencing your your athletes mm-hmm. on a personal level, but there's also got to be a there doesn't have to be. I, sh- I shouldn't have said that. Is there a well? I want to win games, and you know, like what? And there can be a mix of that, I assume. So, like, what what do you what do you try? What's net? What are you trying to accomplish with these kids? I'm try trying to get them to pursue excellence in every aspect of their life, hmm. and it's not okay. So like a perfect a perfect example. Say a kid, I, I coach goalies. So say a goalie comes in and he, he's in practice. Somebody takes a shot from way outside. Should be an easy save. Ball goes in the net. Now you have two choices. You can either turn around and mope your head and be like, oh man, I should have had that. And oh I I stink and all and start talking down on yourself and getting down on yourself or it's okay. Well, guess what? The ball went in the net. I can't change it. I cannot change the past. There is, I can do any, anything you want and develop whatever mathematical equation you want. I don't care. You can't change the past nope. or I can now be like, well, okay, that happened. I know I should have made the save. Here's what I did wrong. Here's what I need to do next time and focus on what you can and focus on what you can control in the future. And that's the same thing in life. Like, okay, you go out and say you go to the grocery store and you're going through, you're buying all these items and whatever you get to check out, you check everything out. You're like, yep. Okay. Going to go home. I'm going to make this great dinner for my wife. All of a sudden you get home, you say you're making her steak and potatoes. Steak, potatoes, and asparagus. Well, okay, you go home, you get the steak out, you season the steak, turn the grill on, you cut up the potatoes where you're making mashed potatoes. I don't care what it is. All of a sudden, you go to get the asparagus, and you're like, where's where's the asparagus? Oh, oh I forgot the asparagus. Oh, this and that. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Well, what can you do about it? Well, next time, when you go to the grocery store and say you're going to make this dinner, how about you write the, write down your groceries on a list? And you go through, and as you grab each, and as you grab each item, you check it off on the list. So that way, next time you go, you know you're not going to forget anything. It's focusing. It's not. It's focusing only on the things that you can control and that you can change. That's it. You can't change the past, so why worry about it? Learn from your mistakes and use those mistakes to help better your odds of things going in your way in the future. Gotcha. You sound just like you did when you were in my class as a senior. You know that? <laughs> well, I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. I'm kidding. <laughs> now, you know, it, you, you had it all in you still, but it's it's amazing what a couple of years and some experience does to your mindset, huh? You're not kidding. You're not kidding one bit. So, so what's the 10-year plan now? If I'm Matt Gill 10 years from now, and, and we're going to come back 10 years from now and laugh at this probably, but. <laughs> That's probably true. I don't mean because it won't happen or will happen, but it, it there'll be a lot of tangents. Um, Jesus. <clears throat> the ten Putting you on the spot. I got to be honest with you right now. I mean, me, this is my first division one level coaching job. And my head is in such a ditz right now with everything that's going on, like coaching at the division three level. And like, they talk about, okay, you're D2, D1, D2, D3, D1. It is such a jump from division three to division one coaching. Like I work, I am in the office every day at 7 a.m. Now I could show up at eight, but my entire reputation, and I'm, I'm kind of taking the long way around here, but my entire Sorry, reputation. I have a follow up, so keep going. My entire reputation in the coaching industry. So, in ten years, to answer your question, short is I, I, I want to be coaching somewhere. Whether that's me coaching goalies for a goalie school like Goalie Smith or whatever it is, or if I'm coaching at the Division One level, high at a higher level institution like maybe an ACC or a Big Ten school. That's my ten year goal. 
So like, I guess to kind of go back to what I was saying, like what I'm doing now to combat that is my entire reputation is from my head coach's word of mouth. So I show up every day at 7 a, at 7 a.m. I'm the last guy to leave normally at 5 or 6 p.m. I try to do everything at the snap of a finger, like be a problem solver, not a problem creator. And I guess in 10 years, like I'm trying, I guess my 10 year goal is to master and be the best coach that I can be in 10 years so I can impact the most amount of lives possible. Good answer. So that, that was a little bit of a loaded question. So let me ask you these two questions. Yes or no. Uh, are you working the hardest you've ever worked in your life right now? Thousand percent. Do you enjoy it? Every bit of it. Then it really doesn't matter in 10 years. You'll get to where you're getting, right? For sure. Yeah. So I should have asked it that way first. No, I, it's, it's. No, Matt, it's, Matt, Matt, I think you got a great perspective when you talk about your coaching reputation is in the hands of one person right now. And, and whether that's right or wrong or fair or unfair is irrelevant. It's just true, right? Yeah. I mean, it's true. So you're going to, you recognize that. A lot of people wouldn't recognize that. A lot of people would be, you know, well, that's not fair. I, who, I hate, I hate that word fair. I just hate it. I, like I, don't, it. I don't even know what to do with it. It's like, here's what the deal is. Your reputation is in this person's hands that to whatever degree you recognize it. So what are you doing? You're going to make the best impression you possibly can on this person is what it sounds like you're telling me, which is exactly what you should be doing. <laughs> I mean, I mean, and, and there's a lot of people who miss that kind of stuff in life. They just don't understand that, look, I don't, whether this is right or wrong, fair or unfair, this is what the circumstances dictate right now. What can Matt Gill control? He can control the hours he puts in, the, the impression he leaves, the, the hard work, like you said, uh, the, the the I'm a problem solver, not a problem creator. You know, these things are all important things. You know, you're looking at it, rightfully so, from his point of view, right? What does he want? How can you make his life easier? Because the more you do that, then, then you're going to get a, more opportunities, better recommendations, whatever it is you're looking for, and and will have earned them. And, uh, and you know, I applaud you for being aware of that that's that not everyone would be aware that's what's going on right now and you know you have a 10-year goal and it's paul said who knows thing life is changes but you better set goals and and my my experience generally is when i set goals especially um goals that i'm passionate about like you obviously are most people tend to blow them out of the water um, if they're if they're really focused and motivated, which you seem to be, so you know th whatever path you take, my guess would be you're going to end up where you want to end up, and probably sooner than than you than you realize. Um, just keep setting those goals. Yeah, I think it's goals are goal, goals are the most important thing to me because if you're just going out there to do something with no end goal at least for me if I'm going out there and I'm going to do something and I don't have an end goal in mind not a chance I'm going to do it perfect example I have been mean and Paul's going to laugh at this I signed up to be a part of the 100k project which is what Paul's a part of and basically it's financial finance certified financial planner financial advisor whatever we work in the financial industry but you have to get licensed. And I've been saying, oh yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I, I need to study all this and that. And I haven't studied. So what did I do today? I sent Jorge, who's one of the higher up, one, who's one of our business partners in the firm. I sent him a text and asked him what the test number is to sign up for my security or not my security is my life insurance license because I know knowing me I'm not gonna study unless I have an end date and a goal like my goal is to get that license well when when am I gonna accomplish this goal I need some sort of a timeline, timeline so sure. once I get this timeline and he tells me the and he tells me the number name of that test I'm gonna go sign up for it so I can look at it and be like okay 
in three weeks, I have a goal to become security or financial insurance licensed. Well, what am I going to do in these three weeks? I'm going to study my ass off. Well, oh, pardon my language. I'm going to study my butt off these three weeks. <laughs> well, no, it's, it's like you're running. It's, it's not, I'm going to run. It's I'm going to run five days a week, three miles a day, what, what, whatever it is. It, it's gotta be, it's gotta be time-based. It's, it's, you know, it, um, and if, if it's not, the chances of you achieving it go down dramatically. Yeah. So, um, you know, that's, that's an, another example, but your running's a great example as well. It, it's, it's, I, like I, I, it's like I tell the students, uh, goals aren't accomplished because you miss a day or you have a bad day or you miss a mark. It's accomplished when those bad habits that are getting in the way of your goals start compounding, right? Your, your efforts compound every single day, either in a positive or negative way. So you can have a negative day, but if you have six other positive days, that's still going to compound. Mm -hmm. And so that's why deadlines are good for some things. And that's why goals are good for other things. And you, you just keep moving with, with the qualities you've already talked about on. I've take, taken all these notes today. Your, your consistency, your discipline, your things happen for a reason because you worked every day at it. You know, you weren't, weren't becoming a Call of Duty expert, like Matt said. Uh, but you're oh, on the right track. I'm a Call of Duty expert. I'll tell you well, that. I am yeah. a Call of Duty expert. <laughs> and you weren't, you weren't making the progress you're making today, I'm, something's telling me. Yeah, no, uh, I definitely wasn't. So I was talking to you on the phone about a week ago, and... I said, I didn't use the word jealous. I said, I'm excited about the place you're in as a 23 year old because I sure wasn't there. And it's crazy where you're going to be. I mean, you, you have Matt and I, every day of our life, you have us because you're younger than us. So anything, anything you start when I start, I can't win because you're younger. You have more time. And that's what I'm excited. I, I mean, I don't know. That sounds weird. Like I'm a loser, but, uh, that's what I'm excited about for you because you've, you've captured this mindset. Well, much earlier than Matt and I. Yeah. Time's on your side. You got the right mindset. Time, time to me is what, that's one of the things that really like it, when it clicked for me to be like, okay, I really have to start taking that action is time is, is you guys both know time is the only resource resource that we have on this planet. That's non-renewable you don't get time back. So Amen. I have, I mean, for like a whole life goal, like I obviously want to be the best coach that I can be, but I like, I love stocks. I love investing. I love finances, every bit of the aspect for it. And it, it kind of hit me as I was sitting there. I actually have a picture on my phone of my checking account and my entire bank account. All I had in my bank account was 92 cents. And ever since then, I, I started to really focus on how I'm spending my time. And a lot of people now spend a lot of their time on social media. And it's a big part of our world and all that. And don't get me wrong, I still spend a lot of time on social media. But how I spend my time on social media and what I consume during that time has changed. I used to concern, I used to consume a lot of the funny memes and all the stupid stuff that really doesn't have much of an impact on like other than just kind of giving you that quick laugh and then you scroll to the next thing. And now when I'm on social media, I'm looking in, in stuff related to finances. I'm looking at stuff related to motivational speaking or just motivation in general. I'm looking at all these different things from people that are where I want to be. And I'm trying to figure out or just looking at what they've done and how I can relate it to my life, whether it be a certain experience they've gone through a certain concept that they preach or just a certain way they go about their day. Like I had a terrible day the other day. And one of the reasons why is because I didn't go through my morning routine. Normally I have a morning routine. I get up, I make my bed, I brush my teeth, I go out, I make coffee. After I drink my cup of coffee, I drink, I grab a bottle of water, I get in the car, I go to work. Well, 
I woke up, I woke up 15 minutes past my alarm, jumped out of bed, threw some clothes on, didn't make my bed, didn't get my coffee, didn't brush my teeth, ran out of there. My hair looked like this and I, I had an awful day, but like a morning routine to me was never something that I really established and thought was important until I started changing what I consumed on social media because I realized that a lot of successful people in life have a morning routine and how you start your day generally contributes to how you finish your day. If you start your day in a productive manner and you start up and you, you get up in the morning and you start doing tasks as opposed to getting up, rolling over, looking at your phone, scrolling through social media for 10 minutes before you get out of bed. Then you get up, you're like, oh, well, what do I want to do? You sit at the end of the, you sit at the end of your bed for five minutes like this because you still have to sleep. It's like, no, I like my morning routine is I get up and I get going. So it, I think a lot of it too is how are you going to spend your time and make sure that if you're going to do a lot of one thing, that that thing is what you spend a lot of your time on, make sure that it's in a productive manner. I, I like what you said there a lot, Matt. You, you're still on social media, but what you're consuming on social media is entirely different. And, and I hadn't heard, it, heard anybody really say it quite like that. That's, that's, that's awesome. It's like, okay, you're going to be on social media. Fair enough. What are you putting in your mind while you're on social media? Are you, are you trying to get some giggles in, like you said? Or are you, put, are you looking and engaging in things that are going to make you a better person? coach a better a, a better friend a better a, a better spouse a better you know a better whatever it is a better investor a better whatever it is and and um i think that's that's an important thing to point out that's uh uh something i don't do a lot on social media it's it's a such a time suck i try to stay away from it but when i'm when i do engage it it's the same way everything for me on there is an opportunity to be a better me and it's it's i shouldn't say everything the vast majority of things, um, and and I'm that, I'm glad you said that because I've never I've never said that I've never really heard anybody say that it's important to to use that uh, as an opportunity if you're going to use social media extensively make sure you're using it in a productive manner because otherwise you can burn uh, burn a lot of time. For sure, Matt, Matt, Matt's seen. I mean, a couple of our podcast guests have been all people I've met online through social media. And, and that's all productive, right? You know I mean? Right. That, that's my point. Right. I, exactly. I use it. Point. I use it with the hashtag. The world is my classroom. And man, it's amazing what you can find out. I just try not to go to recess too much. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Gilly, uh, tell us right now. You're talking to a group of high school kids about what to expect in the next couple of years. What would your advice be? We, we hire you to be the speaker at New Visions graduation. What are you telling them? you life's going to hit life hits back and it's not about the defense you play or the strategy that you have in place. It's about when you step in the ring and you get knocked down, A, are you going to get up? And B, when you get up, are you going to swing back or are you going to wait for life to swing again? I like it. I like that a lot, Gilly. I can call you Matt now because the podcast is over. Uh, this was incredible. Who would have thought a couple of years ago this is what we'd be doing, huh? Yeah, it's it's definitely. I mean, I I definitely wouldn't have thought that you two would have made a podcast. <laughs> wait, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> I'll edit that. I'll edit that. <laughs> now I get it, you know, and. Matt's been a great inspiration and in not only my class, but myself as well. I mean, it's, it's life's been a lot more fun the last six years than professionally speaking, I should say, minus family than, than any time in my life. And it's who you surround yourself with, right? For sure. For sure. Matt, For sure. we wish you the best with your season and your coaching and your, your tests coming up and you'll come back in a year or two, correct? Oh, for sure. I'll Thank see you, you before then. Seriously. Yeah. Thank, Thank you guys yeah. for having me. Take care, brother. We'll see you. See you guys. Yep. Yeah, bye.